What you're watching isn't a troll. It's not some sort of trick. It's not a prank. Uh, I sold my Sony FX6 and I'm moving on to another system. Uh, we'll get there. Now, the first question about this whole selling my Sony FX6 thing is why am I actually doing it? Now, I've been using the Sony FX6 pretty much since the launch day. It's been almost two and a half years since I've been using that system and it's actually gone everywhere with me. It's gone between Canada and the United States on different projects from documentaries to commercials. It's also helped make a lot of content on this channel. In fact, I would actually argue I probably have more content on the Sony FX6 than most other people on YouTube. And it's actually been a big symbol for growth for myself as as a filmmaker as well as a content creator as well. Now, the reason why I sold it is exactly that. I've been using it so much. I've shot so many things on it. In fact, I feel like I've shot everything I wanted to shoot on it. The top handle on the top of my camera, It's the paint's not even there anymore. That's how much I've used this thing. And I just kind of felt like it was time to move to something else and challenge myself and learn how to use a different tool for my craft. Now, in terms of where the turning point was and kind of what I want out of maybe the next camera that I didn't find in the Sony FX6 was uh, I actually started to use a lot of other systems. I've used a DJI Ronin 4D, I got to use the Red Raptor for a little bit and even had some time with the Sony Venice and some things that I was missing like having an all-in-one package in the body from an audio perspective and not having to use that top handle all the time and having an internal raw codec so I could really expand my knowledge in color grading and actually learning to be a better colorist because that's something I'm interested in. I started to find that in other cameras that had internal raw and also if I ever need to use a gimbal for the few times that I actually do, I didn't have to worry about not having any good audio coming out of the camera. Uh, the Sony FX6 is amazing, but there are some limitations from its body, or some things that I need to use it for in some applications, I just can't on that camera body. And that in turn started the snowball of me kind of looking elsewhere in terms of a package that might do better for me. Also just being straight up, like using the Sony FX6 as much as I have, and you'll have this at some point with your camera, sometimes you outgrow what you're able to do on it. And there was times where I was shooting where I was finding myself in a loop where I felt like I was shooting the exact same thing over and over again, which to be fair, it took me a long time to get to that point, and albeit I think it looks good at least, but I found that I was doing the same thing and that was based on the familiarity of using that system. So whatever I go into next, not only am I going to change the type of work that I have, uh, but also it might be an entirely new venture for me that I'm actually really excited about. Now, this should go without saying, it shouldn't be a thing that needs to be discussed, but just because I'm selling my Sony FX6 or any gear that I sell or somebody else does here on YouTube, doesn't mean that that system or that piece of gear is objectively bad. There's gonna be some people that are gonna watch this and say, oh, well, I bought my Sony FX6 FX6 because of so and so and now that they're selling it now I have to look elsewhere and I don't think that's the best way about going about things. My personal experience with the tools that I use for my craft isn't necessarily indicative of how you're going to experience those tools. Based on the videos that are on this channel on the FX6, the FX30 or just using a camera in general, they're still good videos and they're still useful pieces of information and even though the Sony FX6 came out in 2020 and it's been three years, it's still one of the best cameras that you can get and I still recommend it to a ton of people. It's just for me and my personal experiences, I've grown out of that and I'm ready to move on to something else. But that doesn't necessarily mean just because I am that you should. Now, there's always gonna be somebody that's gonna go in the comments and talk about whether or not gear matters. And someone's always gonna say gear doesn't matter. And someone's always gonna say gear absolutely matters. And my thing for that is I personally think that everyone should use as many tools as you can get your hands on. There's no sense in marrying yourself to one ecosystem and actually turning off other opportunities because you're somehow loyal to that one ecosystem. That's honestly, for me, that's weird behavior. I think personally, if you have the opportunity and the means and the resources to try new cameras or try new lenses, you absolutely should take those things up. And when given new information in terms of what camera you want to use, I think it's more than welcome to actually buy that thing, test it out, and if you don't like it, you could always just sell it on the aftermarkets. Now, one of the things that I have a problem with when people say gear doesn't matter is that they remove kind of the nuance and context as to when it does. Because if gear didn't matter at all, we would just shoot everything on an iPhone and everybody would be happy. We'd save money and our clients wouldn't complain. But obviously there's going to be the right tools for the right job. Does that mean you should buy every piece of gear? No, absolutely. And I don't think anybody on YouTube's ever said you should buy every single thing as it comes out. But is there a need for you to have education in the different tools for filmmaking? 
Absolutely. There's never been a time where I've had a great time telling a client or someone else that wants to hire me out that I'm not going to use a camera system because I'm loyal to Sony. That makes no sense. It's ridiculous. And that's all to say, yes, I am going to get a bunch of new equipment. I am going to talk about it here on this channel. You are going to see me rig it out at least five times. Uh, you are gonna see some of those things. That's not necessarily me saying you should jump ship from what you have. It's more so saying that if you do encounter this piece of equipment, you could use it in this scenario or you could set it up in this way and it's just meant to be a touch point of education and not necessarily a sales pitch that you should purge everything that you have and move on to the next shiny thing. Now I haven't made the title of this video yet, but it's probably gonna be somewhere along the lines of, am I leaving Sony because I'm selling the FX6? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not leaving Sony. In fact, this video is shot on the Sony FX30 and I actually have the Sony a6700 because uh, if you complain in a YouTube video long enough they'll actually give it to you however there are still a bunch of things on the Sony system that I have and I'm going to use and also I want to make sure that we make some distinctions with the cameras that are going to be on this channel or at least the way that I'm going to teach on the content that I make now I think there's gonna be a separation in the type of content I'm going to make as far as cameras go now each system is going to represent where somebody might be in their journey. I clearly don't know everything. I'm clearly not good at everything. The amount of unfinished projects that I have personally just because I didn't plan properly for them is not only my fault, but something that I have to work on. And using this new system, I want to use to document that. There's also the creator that I am right now who might use something like an FX3 or an FX30 or one of those mid-tier cameras to actually do the jobs that I do to pay the bills and keep the lights on. And then there's also a third department of people that are just starting out because media is so readily available now that they're just learning how to do things and of course people are gonna say well there's a Peter McKinnon video that already exists but some of these new people coming in have no idea who that is and also some of this information might need a refresh and I want to use a system like the Sony a6700 in order to actually teach those things so people don't feel alienated that they can't afford a $2,000 camera in order to make some decent images that being said what's next for me what's the next camera and and I'll give you a couple of clues because I've made a semi-concrete decision already and I'm just testing it out now before I decide if I want to keep it. Uh, but it's a system that you actually have seen on this channel before. Now, I've actually used a lot more than Sony cameras. You might have to dig back in the archives, but it's something that you might have actually seen before and you didn't know that it was there and it might have been hiding in plain sight. That being said, leave a comment down below what you think I might move on to or leave a comment down below if you're somebody that's also in between cameras. I'd love to get the conversation started and also leave some questions down below because sometimes that actually might be a video that comes up next. Okay, I'm out of here. I'll see you later. Bye.